Welcome, Morning World. I am Judy, your web-based therapist, making therapy accessible and convenient for our clients in Florida and New York, and of course, sharing information worldwide. Today, I want to talk about five ways that seasonal affective disorder season or winter blues season may be a little bit different this year during the pandemic. Um, because we know as the days start to get darker and, and you know, gloomier, um, Season, many people start to experience seasonal affective disorder. And of course, this year during the pandemic, many people, it will probably impact more people. So um, today I want to talk about five ways it may be a little bit different this year. But before I get into that, I want to take a quick moment and say, if you are subscribed, thank you so very much for being a part of our world. If you are not yet subscribed, please t um, click the subscribe button below so that you can become a part of our wonderful world. And of course, um, remember to tick the bell so that you are notified when I post new videos so that you don't miss anything. And of course, if you'd like to purchase one or three of my books, there's also a link below that will take you to a site that shows you all your different options, the different places where you can get one or three of my books. Okay. The first way the um, um, winter blue season will probably be different is that it may be longer or start earlier this year. Because, you know, we have all the stress, all that pent up stress from all year that and we already know that many people have been experiencing um, a lot more depression, a lot more anxiety. So that's something that will more likely, very likely impact seasonal affective disorder or that winter blues as we go from, hey, we're already stressed and anxious and depressed and now with darker days and gloomy, snowy, cold. So. It may be longer and it may, it will probably very likely start earlier too. It will very likely impact a lot more people because normally there, there are some people who normally suffer from seasonal affective disorder, meaning that just about every year they experience that winter depression. However, there are probably going to be more people experiencing a bit of winter depression just because of the state of where we are, because of the level of stress, because of the level of anxiety, because of the level of depression that's already existing. So um, it will probably impact a few more people than, or maybe a lot more people than it normally does. So even if you don't normally suffer from seasonal affective disorder, don't be too quick to dismiss symptoms if you see them, because we are in tough times and in tough times, things happen, different things happen. If you notice symptoms, definitely take the time to address them. Three, symptoms may be more intense. I always talk about how when you're not good, everything hits harder. And so this is one of, one of those situations. Many people normally experience that depression during the winter. However, because we're coming in from that space where we're already not at our best. It is possible that the symptoms may be more intense, that you may feel it a lot harder. It may feel a lot deeper because when you're raw, it hurts more. So be, be ready for that to happen so that if it happens, one, you're not surprised and you don't, don't, um, don't take it to mean that something is wrong specifically with you, but more understanding that Hey, this is part of where we are right now and that so that you can continue to do whatever it is that you need to do to handle your depression and definitely handle your depression at a higher level if that's what you end up experiencing. But very likely because of where we are, it will probably end up, symptoms will more likely, more than likely become a lot more intense because we're not starting in that good place. Um, four. You may need to be more creative and more diligent about addressing your symptoms. Because normally there are things that people do that, and I, things that I, even I recommend that people do that may not necessarily be available right now or during a pandemic. One of the things that sometimes I encourage people to do is hey, when you're up to it, find a way to get out, maybe have a weekly brunch with friends. That, those types of things may not be available during a pandemic. So you may have to be a little, a little bit more creative of, about how you do a Sunday brunch with friends, about how you do your weekly workout or your daily workout, about how you get that, 
how you get your son, how you get everything you normally do to address or to help you address the symptoms of your um, of your seasonal affective disorder. Everything that you normally do, you may need to be a little bit more creative, a little bit more intentional to make sure that you're still able to do them and get the benefits that they provide in the times that we're living because things are going to be different and not everything, not all the resources that you normally have at your disposal will be at your disposal. And hey, you may have to make up a few things. You may have to do some makeshift. Uh, um, I know one of the things that I was encouraging people to do, especially at the start of the pandemic, was find a way to create some type of, some version of a home workout program. So those types of things are going to be important that you make sure that you do. Find ways to or be diligent about and be creative about addressing your symptoms when your normal stuff is not available. And finally, you may need to adjust for your go-to resources. As I was saying, some of the things that you normally use will not or may not be available. This goes from your gym that you normally go to every or three to five times a week that may not be available. So if the if the gym is not available, how do you adjust to ensure that you still get your exercise? Um, if you are no longer able to get to your to the park, um, that's one of those things that during earlier in the pandemic we were not able to go to the park. If you're not able to do that, how do you do, what will you do? And remembering that right now, many people are stressed. Many people are dealing with their own level of stress. So even the people who were available for you last year may not be available this year. Your friend who checked in on you every day last year, that friend may be dealing with their own version of seasonal affective disorder. So and they may not be the one able to be that rock for you this year. So you may need to adjust your go-to or some of your go-to resources. So start looking at, hey, what resources do I need and what resources are still available as well as what resources are not available so that whatever is not available, whatever you need that you don't have, you can find ways to either get them, replace them, or um, substitute for them. Whatever it is that you need to do, make sure that you have find ways to get the resources that you need. Um, let's do a quick recap. First, the the winter blues season may be a lot, maybe a little bit longer, and it's probably it may start earlier because we're we're where we are. Two, it will likely impact a lot more people, more people that did not normally that do not normally suffer from seasonal affective disorder that do not normally experience that winter blues may be experiencing it this year. Three, um, symptoms may be more intense because we're starting from a raw place already. We're already not exactly at our best. So going into that, it may be, it may, we may end up, um, yeah, symptoms may be more intense. Four, you may need to be more creative and more diligent about addressing your symptoms because some of the resources that you normally use may not be available. So you got to make sure that you're finding ways to make up and substitute and do that kind of stuff. And finally, you may need to adjust for, for your go-to resources. Some of your resources that you normally use may not be available. And if those resources are not available, you have to find ways to substitute and adjust for them. So the best way and one of the best ways to do that is to do an early inventory to know what you have, what you don't have, what you need. That way you can start making a plan of to get the things that you need that you don't have or you no longer have access to. As always, if you or someone you know happens to be going through something that's more than you can handle, please remember that there are professionals like myself who are available, able, and willing to help and are even providing remote services who can assist with whatever you may have going on. So please figure out who those people are in your community so that if you need them, you can reach out and get the help that you need. And that is all we have for today. Good morning, worlds. Have an awesome day.